Yes, the immigration uh, situation got solved very quickly. My thanks go out to a lot of people, especially to all of you, uh, for helping out with that. It uh, it did get done very quickly, and uh, so that's all solved. And um, again, suffering along with me a little uh, a little bit because I decided to come on the air despite a Southeast Asian virus that bit me about three days ago. So I'm about three days into a a pretty wild cold, hopefully not AH1N1 or something like that, but just a a fairly common Southeast Asian cold. So if my voice sounds a little odd, that's why. My guest is um, fascinating. He's Dean Radin. We're talking about uh, the Global Consciousness Project, and actually this night a lot more. So in a moment, Dean Radin will be right back. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Very sorry for the interruption. Uh, The equipment that we've got that connects us between this side of the world and the other side of the world just simply disconnected. Uh, There's no way to know why that occurred. It occurred during the break, and it simply disconnected. So our apologies, I guess, when you try to do a a long-form radio program from one side of the world to the other, that occurs occasionally. Let's see if Dean Radin is still there. Dean? I'm still here, Art. (sighs) <sighs> Thank goodness. Um, all right. All right, Dean. Um, I am looking. I was going to ask you if the GCBP uh, Egg Basket Observer is still online. But uh, since we had that little break, I took a second and uh, I'm looking at it right now. So if people would like to take a look at this, uh, I would recommend going to Google and just putting in Princeton eggs and it will take you to um um, the, the appropriate website, it's too long for me to read to you, but uh, they're obviously, they're, you know, the thing is still going. I'm sitting here watching the eggs bounce up and down. It's kind of eerie, isn't it? Yeah, what you're looking at is uh, a movie made of uh, the behavior of all of the eggs over the past 24 hours. And really? there's, there's a number of new displays that are, are being developed to to help visualize what's going on in this thing. And by the way, there. You asked, uh, well, what, what's next? How, how are we going to advance this? And there actually are some advancements. Uh, one of them is a clue that uh, we've known for some years, that psi ability in general seems to be modulated by the geomagnetic field, the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, you, you may remember when uh, the Conscious Universe first came out, one of the chapters talks about psi and the casino since I was in Las Vegas, surrounded by casinos, I had always hoped that I could get some data on what actually goes on in the games from one day to the next mm-hmm. because of the possibility that if we're really dealing with environmental modulation of these abilities, that we'd be able to see it in that data. So I did an analysis. I was fortunate enough to get some data for four years' worth of daily games, uh, table games and slot machines. And I made a guess that the lunar cycle would modulate with psi ability. And the reason is that when the moon is full, it's actually in the tail of the magnetosphere. And what that means is that the, the, you can imagine the Earth's magnetic field like a sphere around the Earth, but because right. of the, the solar wind, the solar wind turns that sphere into more like a teardrop shape. And the teardrop, when the Earth, when the, uh, the moon is full, the teardrop it goes quite far away from the Earth, and the moon is right in the tail. And as a really? result, it tends to dampen the, the fluctuations in the magnetic field. So over the, over the long term, uh, when, uh, during the full moon, the Earth's geomagnetic field tends to be somewhat quieter than it is at other times. And so I figured, well, if it's true that what we've seen in many other studies, that a quiet geomagnetic field seems to improve psiability, then maybe the the take, that the people would win more during those times because it'd be just a tiny little bit more psychic. So that was, <laughs> that was the working hypothesis, and I did the analysis, and sure enough, to, to my shock, uh, people actually were winning a few percentage more during the time of the full moon. <laughs> wow. The way uh, casinos work, I would think that would uh, concern them greatly because they operate on a, well, most of them anyway, on a pretty small percentage of win. So that's amazing. That's no, the, the, one, amazing. The, the, the general managers who, who I spoke to were overjoyed because now there was an, a new reason for people to come into the casino. And, of course, 
as you know, the longer people stay in a casino, even if you end up winning a jackpot, you just stay there and you put all your money back in. That's true. So from a casino's point of view, it was great. It was like a, a, a good reason to attract people, come for a full mood madness and that sort of thing. <laughs> all right. Um, I, I want to ask you about this. It's fascinating to me. I, I don't know a thing about it, but it's on the little sheet that they give me before the show. And mm-hmm. it says, if somebody wants to experiment with a field, a field REG system, mm-hmm. like the eggs uh, used in the Global Consciousness uh, Project, um, somebody now apparently is making some kind of device that you can buy. Um, I hadn't heard a word about this. What? Tell me about it. Uh, as you know, the, the program, the research program at Princeton uh, closed a few years ago when the, uh, the primary professor retired. Right. But there have been so many people who have, have dealt with that program over the years, including myself uh, and students at, from Princeton, that one of the students uh, was entrepreneurial and said, you know what, we can take these random number generators and, and make it a commercial product. So there's now a company called Siloron, P-S-Y. L-E-R-O-N, Siloron.com, which makes random number generators, which are basically identical to the ones that were used in the Princeton lab for many years. And so I I happened to see them at a conference uh, this past weekend, and I said, well, you know, I I think people would be interested in in playing with one of these little boxes. Uh, It's a little box you attach to your your PC, and you can use it for, uh, for field consciousness experiments yourself. And they said, well, if you mention it on the air, then we'll give, people, we'll give the listeners of Coast to Coast a special discount if they use the code word Art Bell. <laughs> so, so now you know. Uh, you can buy this uh, device, and it comes with software, and mainly, I think, for PCs. All right, before people think we're doing some sort of infomercial, we're not. You're not affiliated in any way no. uh, with this company, right? No, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just... Uh, am, am appreciative that somebody had the the business sense to, to make this thing into a little box so people can play with it. Because I, I get asked all the time by people, how how would I go about experimenting with this kind with this concept? And now there's a way. You go. Okay. To well, God bless them. All right. I, I want to know about it. So when you hook this thing up to your PC, mm-hmm. what uh, what do you have? What what are you seeing on the screen? What what can you interpret from what you see? Well, first, what do you see on the screen? What, what does it do? Well, there's several different modes, but in the, in, for a uh, field consciousness kind of experiment, you basically set it up and it just runs all by itself. So you're, you're not, I mean, if you want to, you can in, intently concentrate, like meditate or something for a few minutes and see whether the, uh, the curve that is being created deviates away from chance. You could do that. But, right. But typically, as the way that we've used these experiments is you, you bring your PC and you bring this device to something which you know is going to be very engaging, like, uh, like a choir or a play or a movie or something where you know there's a lot of people and they're all paying attention. And you just run it. You run it in the vicinity uh, where this, this is taking place. Right. And then when it's over, you go back and you can check the data, and there's an automatic way to do an analysis to see whether or not the randomness became less random during those periods when people were very engaged and stuff. Is there any indicator uh, on the screen, uh, something like uh, the display we see with the eggs, for example, so that you, you, you're you aware instantaneously uh, if something begins to deviate from the random? Yes. One of the options is you can press a button and see a real-time curve, which shows you how close you are to chance or how far away you are from chance. Wow. Yeah. You now, this particularly sounds interesting in view of the the recent apparent evidence that the closer to the event you are, the, the larger effect you're going to see. Um, another thing, I guess, not fully answered yet is whether we're seeing some individual particularly effective consciousness at work or mass consciousness at work. I guess you feel it's mass consciousness, but... We don't know anything for sure, do we? Well, we don't know much yet, but the the value of people doing these experiments is maybe we'll begin to learn more. Uh, my guess is that when we deal with mass consciousness, the, the key underlying, the, the, the thing which is most important is coherence. So whether that's coherence within one person or coherence among a group, it's much more, it's much easier to create coherence within yourself 
because you're not battling others. You're only 